we are on to the second platinum red um, for the month. <clears throat> this is the Domaine de Manarin uh, Cotteron Rouge. It's their 2019 vintage. Now, Cotteron, we featured on, well, seems every couple months. You might be thinking, you know, like, when's the burnout going to start on Cotteron? Um, but there's just a ton of variety that I think is under acknowledged from this region. I think this is a really solid example of it. Um, so, this is what us nerds call natty wine. It's natural wine. Um, goes through biodynamic processes, uses native yeast, very low, very low sulfur addition, 100% um, Grenache, no oak whatsoever. It's all concrete um, and it's, it's low maceration overall. So what you're getting is a really super just fresh, juicy version of Grenache that might seem simple, but when you compare it to some of the overly oaked New World versions of Grenache, I think it's super refreshing. Um, so let's pour it in, see how looks in the glass. Also, that's something you might be thinking, 100% Grenache, I thought all Cote de Rhone was GSM. No, um, there's, a, there's a ton of variety that you can throw into Cote de Rhone, um, and even more so when we get to the world of like shutting up to pop when there's like 23 varietals that you can technically throw in there. Um, but yeah, Cote de Rhone can have near that same amount of variety. Um, so we look at this, we get this really lovely magenta color. Um, a little bit of purple hue. Um, I do believe this wine is unfiltered, if not both unfined and unfiltered. You can see there's definitely um, some some dullness to it. There's some murkiness to it. You can't really see perfectly through the glass, so it indicates that there's um, some sediment left in the bottle, which again, super common for wines made um, using this method overall. It is just bursting with these really fresh plum and raspberry notes. It just jumps out of the glass. There's really not a whole lot of savoriness to the nose on this, um, which again, you might be surprised with with Rome, but again, you can you can have wines like this from this region. You can smell the acidity. You can smell a little bit of sweet baking spice, a little bit of black pepper on the end there, but as far as like savory, savory notes, um, there isn't much. So yeah, let's give it a taste. Yeah, so medium plus to heavy bodied, higher acid, kind of uh, more subtle, like sweet tannins overall. I mean, again, the thing at the very forefront is just this fruit, just this unrelentingly fresh, juicy raspberry. And like a, you get a little bit of like almost boysenberry notes, a little bit of like cassis in there. Not a ton. It's mostly focused on that raspberry, maybe a little bit of cherry element there. Um, the high acid balances out the, the perceived sweetness from the fruit. You get a touch of like black pepper on the end, but it's really not that much at all. You get a little bit of smoke, but not a ton. Um, this is just a super fun take on Grenache from a region that's becoming more and more common in the retail scene. And I would pair this with, you know, something richer, um, but you could all this, also pair this as far as like vegetarian options, though. You could do like mushrooms, asparagus, eggplant, anything that has a high umami factor that balances out with kind of the, the fruitier ripeness of the wine. So yeah, 